are about to listen to a message from Root River Community Church. If you live in the Rushford, Minnesota area and do not have a church home, we would love to have you at one of our Sunday morning services. For more information about our church, visit our website at rootriver.org. We hope and pray that God speaks to you through this message. Beautiful wife up with me here this morning. We're in the midst of a message series called Fixer Upper. We're talking about how to fix up uh, our parenting, our relationship uh, with our spouses. And I, I'm just, I was so excited all month long to get to this Sunday and, and be up here with my sweet wife. Would you guys welcome Miss Krista Osterbauer up to the stage with me this morning? Uh, last week, we talked about the love bucket. We talked about the love bucket, and we read this passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, three things will last forever. What are they? Let's read them together. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, so let love be your highest goal. And we talked about how we all have this love bucket within us, this thing uh, where we store up all the love that we have received. And it's your spouse's job to really fill up uh, your love bucket. And so it's your job to fill up your spouse's love bucket. Uh, the first thing that, that I want to talk about this morning is filling up your hus husband's love bucket through phileo love. Last week we talked about how to fill up your wife's love bucket, and I want to encourage you to go online and check that message out. But this week we're going to be talking about how to fill up your man's love bucket. So the first thing is phileo love. Let's all say that together. It's phileo love love okay and this means like a brotherly kind of love so all of us women know we love that face-to-face -face time that um, I've heard couch time need to need time where we are just eye to eye and we are talking emotions what is our heart feeling what are you feeling I don't know how many times I've asked Mike so what are you feeling and he's like I don't know and I'm like what you gotta be feeling something what are you thinking nothing what it drives me crazy but it's it's normal and we see that in men are so much shoulder to shoulder time they need that where they need to be working on a project I don't know there's many times Mike is just working with men and he'll come home and he'll say we had this awesome conversation and it's because it's shoulder to shoulder and that's great and it works for them but us women need to realize that's what feeds their love bucket is that shoulder to shoulder time. Sometimes it's hard, but that's where we come in balance. Yeah. And so, so women, when they call each other, they're like, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Let's go for coffee. Let's talk for two hours about our problems, our deep concerns, what our soul is feeling. And, and men, we're like, hey, let's go like roof something or, or let's go do a project together. That's what fills up our love bucket. So wives in the room, you need to realize that God created men this way. And he created you. He gave you th this, this command to phileo love your husband, to brotherly love him. So some of uh, my favorite times in our marriage is when Krista will like just pull up a chair while I'm sheetrocking or while I'm, uh, I remember this one time I was laying tile and Krista just pulled up a chair and she just sat with me. And, and I was like, baby, I don't know what you're doing, but I love it. You know, I just loved her being with me while I was working. And, and the funny thing is, is Krista doesn't, doesn't remember any of those times, but yet it was meaningful to me. And some of you wives in the room, you might be thinking uh, about those times and be thinking like, that's the most unproductive use of my time. I've got things to do. I've got places to go. I've got kids. I got diapers to change. You know, that sort of thing. You got to realize you got to stop all that because this is what the Bible commands you to do. It's to phileo love your husband. Uh, the, the next thing, we kind of had the, a joke with this one, um, but, but we'll skip the joke. But, but uh, the next thing that you, you wives need to realize what fills up your husband's love bucket is just intimacy. And because there's kids in the room, we obviously won't dive deep into this one. Chris and I, we did a teaching on this last year uh, outside of Sunday morning, and we have it recorded if you're interested in it. Uh, but I just want to get all the wives in the room to promise me something. Will you, are you going to promise me something, wives? Come on. Can I hear you say yes? Talk to me. Commit to it. Commit to it before you know. It's simply to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 
First Corinthians chapter seven. Uh, yeah. So um, Mike told me about this chapter, and I I denied it. I said that is not in the Bible. That is not in there. And he kept saying it, and finally I looked it up, and it's there. And it had to change our marriage, and it did change our marriage to know that it is in the Word of God. That is so good for us wives to see that and read it. So everyone of you women, we need to do it. You need to read it. First Corinthians chapter 7. Wives, lift up your left hand, your right hand, and promise me. Come on, I'm looking at some of you. I don't know, just a hand, in any hand. But I promise to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Come on, can you say it? I promise to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right. I saw which one of you wives didn't raise your hand. I'll talk to you after the service. Uh, here, here's the third thing um, that you need to, to, to understand. In order to fill up your husband's love bucket, I, you need to do something for him. But before I give you that point, we have a giveaway to give away. Krista's going to explain what it is. So we have a quick giveaway that we're going to do, and it's actually a gift certificate to Illuigi, $25. And this is for a married couple, okay? And this is something we talked about last year. Men are supposed to wear boxing gloves. They are fighting for their marriage. They're fighting for their wives, okay? And whoever stands up first and says it gets this prize, Okay. All right, Mike's going to count down, Wait. but this is it, yeah. okay? What, us, what are us women supposed to have in our hands for our men? Bev got it. Very good. Pom-poms. Come on up, Bev. A Claim cheerleader. Your prize. Woo! <laughs> Here's a, come on, that was a weak round of applause. Here, Bev, Woo! Helen. Lynn. Okay, so wives, let's just review this from last year a little bit. You need to cheer on your man, okay? What do cheerleaders do? They cheer. They encourage. Uh, that is, they put courage into their players. Uh, very few times do men hear throughout their lives, like, hey, I believe in you. Like, hey, I think God's got something for you. Hey, you're doing a great job in this or in this. And, and so wives, it's really your role to be the cheerleader for your husband. We live in a culture that downgrades men throughout our society. And, and this is something that Krista does phenomenal at, is cheer me on. She actually has some pom-poms that she keeps by the front entrance of her house that she'll grab every once in a while. And just as I'm walking into the doors, she'll cheer me on. And in front of other people, she brags about me. In front of our kids, she brags about me. Uh, she wrote me this note one time uh, and made me lunch. And the note just simply said this, like, I believe in you. And that's what a cheerleader does, is it believes in its players. So the best cheerleader, we say, is in Songs of Song. Okay, this is a very, very intimate book of the Bible, but it's very good for married couples. Um, we see in Songs of Songs 5, another chapter that you can read, it says, my beloved is outstanding among 10,000. I say beyond a million. Yep. He, his head is purest gold. His hair is wavy. His arms are rods of gold. His body is like polished ivory. Okay, so, I mean, that's a, that's a wife there cheering on her man. One time this, this, this woman came in uh, after service, and she was going through all these marital problems, and, and I tried to make this point to her. I said, you just got to cheer on your husband. She said, I don't even know what to cheer. I said, make something up. Like, and I was serious. I'm like, find the smallest thing that he does well and just make it this big Thing. Grab some pom-poms and cheer on your man. Turn to your neighbor this morning and say, if you're a woman in the room, and say, I want to cheer on my man. Come on, you got to say it like you mean it. I want to cheer on my man. And I saw Shannon clapping back there. That's, you should preach this message, Shannon. Uh, okay, here's the last point here. Um, you, you, you need to fill up your husband's love bucket by honoring him and by respecting him, okay? By honoring him and by respect him. And, and this comes from Ephesians chapter 5. We've studied this before. But women, they need, this, they need love. They need this deep agape kind of love, this love that cherishes 
them. Men, we need this honor. We need respect. We thrive off of it. And so what does respect look like uh, in, for example, in our home? Uh, Krista, she never second guesses a decision that I've made, uh, especially in front of the kids. Now, that doesn't mean that she, that she doesn't have a spot where she can come to me and say, honey, have you ever thought about this or that? Or tell, talk to me more. I guess I don't see it yet. Uh, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have a place to do those sorts of things, but she never second guesses a decision that I've made. Uh, and even if, uh, even, if, um, I, even if she doesn't agree with me about whatever decision I made, she still honors it and, and she respects it. Uh, here's, again, what it looks like in our house. Uh, Krista really can't do anything without my permission. And I could just feel like some of you wives cringed up in your chairs when I said that. Uh, but seriously, she really can't do anything without my permission. I'm talking about purchases. I'm talking about going out with friends. I'm talking about uh, when she really likes to run. I'm talking about even her going out for a run. She always asks for my permission. Uh, yesterday, we were driving back from Wisconsin Dells, and she wanted to get a haircut. Uh, so she wanted to set up a haircut appointment. And so she asked me before she did set up that appointment. Uh, and so all these sorts of things, she always goes through me. She goes underneath my authority so that I can give her my blessing. But it always hasn't been that way. And sometimes in me, I want to do something. Um, but I realized in our marriage, it just, it caused tension because he wanted that leadership role and I wanted to control him in my, in my women nature or whatever. And I, in now I don't feel controlled at all. I actually love it when I'm asking him. There's something that is fulfilling um, as a woman to ask him for these things. And it's because my love bucket is full. It's because he's cherishing me. He's loving me. He's giving me what I need. And I don't feel that control. I, I embrace it. And we, we're a team in it together. Yeah, and so as Krista lives underneath my authority, okay, and, and these words can all mean negative things, okay, but, but the Bible doesn't mean them to mean negative things, okay, but, but as Krista lives underneath my authority, God will bless everything that Krista does. When Krista steps out from underneath my authority, God can't bless it because she's not operating in her biblical role. Uh, let me give you a quick example. Uh, a while ago, we got the internet at our house. We were without the internet at our house for like two years. I mean, what did we do? It was crazy. Uh, we just like twiddled our thumbs all day long. But now we finally got the internet and both of us kind of went on this like shopping spree. We finally had uh, a way to purchase things online. And, and one of the things Krista purchased was one of these like vitamin supplement kind of things. But as she was purchasing, purchasing it, she really felt like the Lord said to her, Krista, are you sure your husband would approve of this? Are you sure this is a purchase he would want you to make? But she went ahead and made the purchase anyways. And it turned out to be like this whole scam where like, like we had to call the credit card company and you know go through that whole rigmarole. And it was just kind of this big mess that we had to clean up uh, after the fact. And, and later we were kind of reviewing it and I never got mad at you, right, girly? I never got mad. Uh, uh, but afterwards, we were reviewing it, and we just took a step back, and we said, isn't it interesting? Like the one time Krista does something out from underneath my authority or underneath my covering, my blessing, and it's the one time where the Lord allowed our credit card to get jeopardized. And, and we just thought, like, uh, we feel like it's the Lord telling us, like, hey, everything we do, it needs to be in line with the Word of God. Whereas I'm seeking the Lord and being the leader of our home, uh, my family can step underneath my blessing and God can bless everything in our household. Uh, here's another example of something Krista did so well. Uh, she showed me a picture of shoes she wanted to buy our son Gabe. They were $19. And all I did, and this was through text messaging, all I did was I text back, um, dot, dot, dot. And right away Krista responded and she said, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll find another pair. And I just, I was so blessed by that because so many women, it'd be so easy for them to be like, oh, come on. Like, it's $19. Like, let's, 
our son needs shoes, let's buy, Mike, you're such a cheapskate, like, can't you just buy our kids some shoes? Uh, so many women would go there, and, and what that is called is, now brace yourself for this word, women, but that's called nagging, okay? Let that sink in for a little bit, and I know that sounds like a harsh word, but that's a word that the Bible uh, uses as a warning to women as well. Proverbs 21, verse 19, or verse 9, it says, Better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a nagging wife. So the Bible's giving women a warning like, hey, don't step out from underneath the blessing of your husband. Don't put yourself in this nagging spot. And, and really the nagging, it, it really comes from women's nature to want to help their husbands. Uh, God said in Genesis chapter 2 that wives were to be their husband's help mate. And, and so wives, uh, you're a lot of times doing it from good intentions. Like you want to help your husband. Uh, you want to see him thrive. You want to see him be the godly leader of your home. And so you, you bring him these books. You, you ask him to pray. You, you do all these sorts of things. But sometimes it can come across nagging because typically in Genesis chapter 3, uh, it, it forewarns women that your sin nature is to control your husband. So typically, your desire to help can sometimes turn into controlling your husband. And so this is where you start to put the pom-poms away, and you start to operate more like a coach for your husband than to, to be a cheerleader for your husband. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. I, I wish you guys could see this up on the screen, but tune into these words here as I read them. Uh, it, it tells this to wives. You wives must accept the authority of your husband. You know what that's going to do for your husband? Boop, 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 boop. It's going to fill up your husband's love tank, okay, love bucket. Then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. It says they will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. So wives, you want to win over your husband, you want to see them be a godly leader in your house, you want to see them, uh, you know, as we talked about last week, pray over you, pray over your children, uh, lead you in that sort of way. What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to use words? Are you supposed to uh, kind of confront them about it? No, the Bible says to just simply accept their authority and, and to, to win them over with a reverent and pure Life. It goes on to say in verse 5, this is how the women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God. Okay, so they're putting their trust in God, not in, in something that they can do in and of themselves, but in God alone, and accepted the authority of their husband. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and even called him her master. Uh, so these women of old, uh, think of some of the men that they were dealing with. I mean, Abraham... You know, he was the founder of her faith. He was a great guy. Uh, he was a man of faith. But he had his own flaws. I mean, he lied. Uh, he, I mean, he was, he was unfaithful to Sarah. And, and yet the Bible says that Sarah really won him over through a soft, humble, submissive kind of heart. And, and that's what we need to consider when we're considering filling up our husband's love bucket. So also another thing is in this, us women, we need to learn, our quote is, get out of the way and pray. And it's just so important to remember that God is in control of your husband. Hands off to us ladies, okay? We are not in control. God is in control. And he's got brothers also in this room, outside of this room, that can keep him accountable as well. We are not that authority to tell him what he needs to do, what he doesn't need to do. We need to get out of the way, and we need to pray. And so Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12, it says this, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not e easily broken. And so sometimes you'll see this in a wedding ceremony uh, where a husband and wife, the bride and groom, they'll be like tying these three cords together. And one cord represents the husband, one cord represents the wife, and then the other cord represents God or the Holy Spirit. And it says when these cords are woven together, it, it cannot be easily broken. And I think what wives sometimes do, okay, or, or maybe it goes both ways, is they look at the three cords and they, they cut 
the Holy Spirit out of the picture. Uh, it, it, just because they're trying to do what the Holy Spirit does for us already. They're trying to coach their husband. They're trying to convict their husband. Uh, when really their job is to honor their husband, is to cheer on their husband. Uh, a couple of examples for you as we close here. But we had some friends down in Iowa, and it was really unfortunate. Uh, they both loved the Lord, but the husband, every time he would come home from work, he'd like plop down on the couch and start playing video games. And I'm like, come on, what are you like? 14? Like, come on, get up. You know, like, st start being a man. And, and the wife, she took that approach as well. Uh, she, she, and it turned into this nagging. Like, come on, aren't we, there's kids to take care of. There's things to do. That sort of thing. And Krista actually had a word from the Lord for this couple, I really believe. So she came to me asking for advice, and I just felt like it sounds bizarre, but I felt like the Lord wanted me to tell her that sit down with him pick up a remote and play with him. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, but I told her that and she did it and she told me that their marriage had improved and that he started maybe seeing who he was, okay, that he was just sitting there, um, but also seeing, wow, my wife loves me. She's like playing with me. She's taking part in my life. And then God, since she got out of the way, God was able to come in and convict him and talk to him. Yep. And so, so again, if she would have just stayed trying to control her husband, she would have kept, like, boxing out the third core. She would have kept uh, trying to do what the Holy Spirit was already trying to do. But because she took Krista's advice, and isn't that wild advice? Like, what, what should I do? There's this lady caught in tension here. Krista's like, just play some video games with them. Like, that's what she really wanted to do. You know, she wanted to give him a piece of her mind. Uh, but, but she took the advice. And what did that do? Let, let's review our points. Uh, that that, that phileo loved him. That filled up his bucket with phileo love. All of a sudden, they're doing something shoulder to shoulder. Uh, what else did that do? That, like, cheered him on. Instead of him coming home from work and her kind of, like, being the coach, now all of a sudden, she's cheering him on. It, it created this honor. It created... This respect, and, and in our marriage as well, uh, there's been times where I've been neglecting what I'm supposed to be doing as the spiritual leader, and instead of Krista uh, kind of like you know getting after me about those things, she just simply prays for me. And in every single time, another man of God would come alongside of me. Uh, I think of this one instance specifically with Dwayne Agramson, my father-in-law, and he just came alongside of me and said, "Mike, what are you doing to lead your family?" I, I got to tell you, wives, as you guys get out of the way and pray for your husband, the Holy Spirit can do his job, and he can be at work in your life. Uh, Brittany, would you play for us as we kind of wrap this up here uh, this morning? Uh, so as we end here this morning, I just want to encourage everybody to not do the minimum. Last week we talked about what our husband's supposed to be doing to fill up their wives' love bucket. Uh, this week we talked about men, what are you supposed to be, or wives, what are you supposed to be doing to fill up your husband's love bucket. Uh, and I want to encourage you, don't do the minimum. Sometimes we get into like a remodeling project and we get towards the end and we're like, okay, what can I skip by on? Uh, we're in the midst of our remodeling our sink or our, our kitchen and we're getting kind of towards the end here and I'm talking to Dwayne, my father-in-law, about the things, the steps. And he says to me, well, what sink are you going to use? And I'm like, I'm going to use our old one. He's like, that sink? You're going to use that sink? You just spent all this time and money on everything else, and you're going to use that sink? And it made me think, like, don't do the minimum. You know, when it comes to fixing up your home, you can skimp by and, and just try to make things work, or you can go the extra mile and make your house beautiful. And that's what we want to do in our marriages. And, and only God can fix your bucket. If you've been hurt, if you've been wounded along the way, you've got a bunch of holes in your bucket, you don't have any trust for your spouse anymore, God can fix your bucket if you, if you step in obedience to his word. Uh, so church family, would you stand with me here this morning as we close and allow me to pray a prayer, a blessing over you. 
Uh, Lord, I thank you so much, again, for this church body. Lord, we thank you for your word, how it teaches us. Lord, we thank you for how your, your spirit, it convicts us, how it sets us apart. And Lord, right now in this moment, I pray over each and every one of us that your spirit would be at work in our lives. Uh, Lord, even right now, that you would convict us of even the smallest sin in our life, that you would convict us of not truly going all out and trying to fill up our spouse's love bucket. Lord, I pray for my own wife up here. I pray that you'd bless her, that you continue to pour out your spirit upon her. Lord, that you'd fill her up with the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, Lord, for all of us, that you'd fill us up with your fruit of your spirit. Lord, I pray for somebody in the room this morning who's never really surrendered their life to you. I pray that even in this moment, God, they would choose to surrender their life to you. Lord, I pray for somebody here uh, with a struggle, with a need, with a healing that, they're, that they've been praying for. Lord, I pray that, uh, that they would be prompted by your spirit to come up front after the service and receive prayer by the prayer team. Uh, Lord, I pray that as we move into a time of ministry after the service, that your spirit would remain here and that you would continue to do a good work in our hearts. Lord, again, we, we need you. We cry out for you. We pray that you would continue to be the God of our families and that we would continue to say, as for me and my house, we will serve. What is it, friends? We will serve the, the Lord. In Jesus' name, we all agreed together and said, amen. You just listened to a message from Root River Community Church. For more information about our church or how to make Jesus the Lord of your life, visit our website at rootriver.org.